Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a novel about zombies, vampires, werewolves, witches, and all their various stuff. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Hey, Halloween was last week. Get with the times. My response is, no, it's my show. I'll get with whatever I want to. That sounded weird, didn't it? <laughs> anyway, um... Today's review is Death Warmed Over, Dan Shamble's Zombie P.I. by Kevin J. Anderson. I talk about a lot of stuff by this guy. I mean, you know, there's, the, I mean, Last Days of Krypton, Hellhole, Doom Month, Saga of the Seven Sons, but he writes a lot of stuff, most of which good, and that I like. But anyway, I'm, I like to talk, I like to talk to him first about, like, my first impressions when I first saw the cover, I mean, his, like, I first saw it and it was like, Death Warmed Over, and it shows like this guy in the foreground, and, you know, notice that he's looking a little blue, and you see like, oh my goodness, he has, he has a bullet hole in his head, what the heck? And then it says below, Dan Shamble, Zombie P.I., like, Zombie P.I., zombie, he's a zombie detective, what? And then, like, in the background, you see a, um, a mummy drinking wine with a vampire and a werewolf chasing down two witches, one of whom has been turned into a pig. And the whole thing's like, what the heck is going on here? And it really makes you want to pick this thing up to see, like, what it's all about. Anyway... Ever since the big uneasy unleashed vampires, werewolves, and other undead denizens on the world, it's been hell being a detective, especially for a zombie P.I. Dan Shamble, taking on the creepiest of cases in the unnatural quarter with a human for a lawyer for a partner and or I mean a human lawyer for a partner and a ghost for a girlfriend. Dan Shamble redefines dead on arrival, but just because he was murdered doesn't mean he can leave his clients in the lurch. Besides, zombies are so good at lurching. Now he's back from the dead, and back in business with a caseload that's downright unnatural. A resurrected mummy is suing the museum that put him on display, two witches, victims of a curse gone terribly wrong seeking restitution from a publisher for not using spell check on its magical tomes, and he's got to figure out a very personal question. Who killed him? For Dan Champ, it's not it's all in a day's work. Still, does everyone have to call him Shamble? Funny, fresh, irresistible this cadaver's caper puts the P.I. in R.I.P. with a vengeance. You know, get first uh, talk, say that um, this event called The Big Uneasy. Basically, it occurred like 10 years prior to the events of the book. And um, we don't really know much about it, which I really like. It's just like, all we know is it's just this mysterious event that happened 10 years ago. It's the reason for all these unnatural people or zombies and vampires and ghosts wandering the world and it somehow involves the Necronomicon in some way. I mean it involves the Necronomicon and um, that, that's all we ever really learn about it you know because you know the big question that we're supposed to be focusing on is the big case of who killed our main guy, our main character as well as his girlfriend, because she's like poisoned. And came back as a ghost. Anyway, um, there's plenty of um. As you're, there's the the examples like the witches with the spell check and the, um, you know, like resurrect a mummy. Mummy aren't the only aren't the only little cases that he deals with. There's other stuff like um, shell like there's um. Uh, this vampire named Sheldon who's dealing with like hate group called the Straight Edgers. 
And, um, you know, they play a big part. They, it sort of seems like they play a little part, but then they get a slightly bigger role in the... At least one of its members does anyway. It gets a big role in the movie in the, later on in the story. And, um, you know, it's, it's, well, overall, uh, you know, there's plenty of uh, funny, dark humor. You know, like some stuff involved. I mean, like uh, the story about vampire pornography, like this little thing, and uh, and uh, zilfs. I'll just let you figure that out on your own, or read the novel again. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, it's really fun, like lots of funny stuff. You know, it's just a really great read for me. My personal rating is five out of five. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I highly recommend it for anybody who watches, or for anybody who thinks it might be a good read as well. Lots of good humor. It's just a good read. Anyway, and till next time, see you later.